Welcome students to chemistry concept. This is Pankaj Singh and today we will be discussing about formal charge. And our main objective is to learn what is formal charge, how to calculate formal charge and what is the use of formal charge. First of all, what is formal charge? So let's, uh, uh, well, first of all, let's read that what is given here, what is written here. Formal charge is the charge assigned to an atom in a molecule assuming that electrons in all the chemical bonds are shared equally between atoms regardless of their relative electronegativity. Now there are some bulky terms used and it is difficult to understand them. So let me make it simple for you. Let's say we have PO43 negative uh, ion. So is it like that okay so there is a phosphate ion with three negative charge and now what does this three negative charge means is it like that this minus three charge is present on phosphorus or is this like minus three charge is present on an oxygen atom how is it actually actually it means that this minus three charged is not present on phosphorus or oxygen it is present on phosphate ion and it is distributed over one phosphorus atom and four oxygen atoms but is it shared equally or there is some rule to sh share this minus three charge over those phosphorus and oxygen atoms and if it is shared that what percentage of that charge would be present on phosphorus and what percentage of that charge would be present on oxygen is called formal charge calculation okay and it is regardless of their electronegativity it doesn't depend on the fact that oxygen is more electronegative so it will acquire more negative charge and phosphorus is less electronegative so it will acquire less negative charge there is some rule which is followed for the distribution of this charge over these atoms called formal charge and now let's learn that that rule and the rule is if we want to calculate for formal charge on a particular atom it is equal to total number of valence electrons in the free atom minus total number of non bonding electrons that is lone pair minus half of total number of bonding or shared electrons let's understand with example of ozone there are three oxygen atoms and let's calculate the formal charge for first atom formal charge is equal to total number of valence electron in the free atom it is an oxygen atom and there are six electrons in the valence shell of oxygen atom minus total number of non-bonding electrons we can say there is a lone pair so there are two non-bonding electrons minus half total number of bonding electrons this oxygen atom is forming one two three bonds and each bond involves two electrons so there are three bonds that means there are six bonding electrons so it is one by two into six and the answer is six minus two minus three that is plus one plus one formal charge on the first oxygen atom let's talk about second again if you want to calculate the formal charge valence electrons of the oxygen atom 6 minus there are two lone pairs so there is there are four non-bonding electrons minus this oxygen is forming only two covalent bonds that means four electrons so 1 by 2 into 4 so it comes out to be 6 minus 4 minus 2 that is 0 if we talk about the third one Again, there are six atoms in the valence shell of oxygen, so valence electron of oxygen remains six, and there are two, four, six non-bonding electrons minus there is only one bond, so one by two into two one bond, that means only two electrons comes out to be six minus six minus one. That is yes, it is minus one charge done. 
So now we know that what is the formal charge on all the three oxygen atoms. Now what is the use of this formal charge calculation? Actually, they are, uh, we know that for a given molecule, sometimes there are more than one possible structures. There are more than one Lewis structures possible. There are more than one resonating structures possible. So which one is more accurate, which one is more stable is determined on the basis of that formal charge. That structure in which all the atoms have either zero formal charge or as close as possible to zero would be more stable and that would be more uh, possible structure that would be chosen as the main structure. I hope the things were clear to you. Stay tuned for more videos of organic, inorganic and physical chemistry and we love if you give your feedback in our comment section and don't forget to subscribe. Thank you.